Today I'll be discussing shooting video for social media and specifically the trend of shooting video in vertical orientation for platforms like YouTube, Instagram and TikTok. While vertical video is becoming increasingly popular, there are still some advantages shooting video horizontally and cropping it then afterwards to a vertical aspect ratio. And this is what I want to discuss today. Horizontal shooting versus vertical shooting. We'll also discuss the possibilities of 8K recordings and the drawbacks of some wide angle lenses and the distortion when using them in the vertical orientation. Firstly, camera bodies are designed to be held horizontally and this eliminates the need for any L brackets or camera cages when you want to mount it on a tripod. Although I have to say that I myself enjoyed shooting with the Canon R5 vertically because I found it to be quite natural and comfortable. Additionally, shooting horizontally takes out the decision fatigue of when to shoot in what orientation. So you can just crop in afterwards, but keep in mind to have enough space on the top and bottom of your frame so you have the possibilities and freedom of cropping in afterwards and keeping enough distance and negative space around your subject. When doing this, it is important to also use the rule of thirds or the grid, which is an option you can activate in most of the cameras or external recorders. If you don't have a camera which has the rule of thirds included or the grid and you don't have any monitor, you could use some cardboard and stick it on the monitor to gray out or blend out the areas of the frame that aren't on the shot after cropping in. When shooting video for social media and vertical orientation, there are a few things you need to keep in mind. First, the composition. When you compose your shot, make sure you have enough negative space around the subject as the vertical orientation doesn't allow too much field of view, so you have to be mindful of how close you get to the subject. Then, of course, you need to make sure that the lighting is appropriate and you don't have any harsh shadows or too bright areas which are overexposed. And then there's the third point of stability. When shooting in vertical orientation, make sure you hold the camera steady when you are handhelding the camera because in vertical orientation you always get more shakes visible in the frame compared to taking the footage horizontally. And then of course audio. Make sure your audio is loud and clear and if you can use an external microphone to ensure a great audio quality. Here a quick tip. You can always use your iPhone or mobile device as they have quite good microphones compared to the built-in microphones on your camera. And for the format of the video aspect ratio make sure you choose the right format in the shooting for the end product. And for Instagram, TikTok and YouTube, that would be 9 by 16. For the first section, I want to look at shooting content horizontally and then cropping in afterwards. And the pros and cons that comes with that. For the pros, you have more flexibility when it comes to the post-production regarding the framing and composition of the frame. And it allows you to have a wider field of view and for interviews, for example, you could reuse the same 4K horizontal footage for two different shots of two different persons talking to each other. That isn't quite possible when shooting vertically as you only have that much space available and if the subject gets too close, that really doesn't work out. So imagine having two, having two persons on one vertical screen. Doesn't look too good. For the con side is that you can't perfectly preview the frame, although you have the grid and the rule of thirds enabled, it's always a little tricky when you shoot in horizontal orientation and want to look at the monitor and then want to see what is really in frame because the eye sees the whole picture and not only the rule of thirds. Yes, of course, I can compose my shot um, with, the, with the lines on the screen, but I don't have the end result directly on the monitor as I would have in vertical orientation. And of course, then there's the point of lower image quality as the 4K image gets cropped in. So I know that the content you upload on YouTube Shorts, TikToks and Instagram Reels is basically smaller than the cropped in footage of the vertical space in a 4K image. 
so you have enough space to even have a few pixels of adjustment in the top and bottom of the frame. So as we all know, if I have a 4K vertical image and scale that down in the export settings of Premiere Pro, this results in a better image quality compared to having horizontally taken 4K footage and out of that the vertical inside of it. So keep that in mind. Shooting content directly in vertical orientation also comes with a few pros and cons. For the first and biggest fact, if you shoot directly in vertical, you don't have the issue of composing and reframing the shot afterwards in your editing software. And of course, you have more image quality as I just told you. But as you already guessed, on the con side, there is the problem of less flexibility in the post-production work as you can't reframe the content or have a horizontal image taken out of it because you don't have enough field of view on the, on the shot. And then we have the issue of lens distortion. When using a lens like the 15 to 35 Canon RF or any other wide angle lens, you will have issues on the shorter sides of the picture as the distortion gets worse on the side. Alternatively, you can position your subject in the middle and keep um, track of the face so it doesn't get too much in the corner as the face gets more distorted then. When it comes to 8K recording, it's important to understand that of course it takes a lot of space to do that. But as for the fact of cropping in afterwards, you can achieve something you can't with vertical and you can't with 4K horizontal and that is to have the best quality and most flexibility in post-production when trying to crop in for vertical and horizontal content. To compare the two formats, I shot some test footage horizontally and vertically and compared the results afterwards. And here are my results. And as you see, the distortion gets quite aggressive here. When I take a circle, for example, and hold it in the dead center, you see it's a circle. But as it gets to the bottom, you see that the shape gets elliptic as hell and also at the bottom. That's not so much for light right and left. And if you now would compare that to a cropped in, uh, to a zoomed in picture, you would see and now at 35 mil, you see that the distortion is not as much noticeable. So to combat the distortion on wide angle lenses, I would recommend to use a longer focal length, like a 50 mil or 35 on that lens. And if I go now all down on 15 mil, you see that the distortion is really stark. So if I would have to put my face on here, this wouldn't make a good video as it obviously doesn't look great. So when I place myself here, I still got the issue of quite long fingers. So if I want to do it, I can, but I need to keep in mind um, that this could be distorted and sorry for looking there, but I have to kind of see where I'm going with my hand. And as you can see, uh, I could perfectly make this work with 35 mil. I just have to back down a little bit to keep the distortion as low as possible. So here you have an example of the 4K fine mode on my Canon R5 for 4K horizontal. And if I now crop in into vertical mode from 16 by 9 to 9 by 16, this is what you get out of the quality. And now this is content shot directly in vertical orientation on my Canon R5 in 4K fine. So how does this compare to the 4K cropped and the 8K cropped to vertical content? So as you see, here are some examples of the different shooting orientations and cropped in formats as well as 4K and 8K recordings compared. I hope you found this information helpful when trying to decide in what orientation you should shoot when shooting for social media or vertical content in general. If you did enjoy, please leave a like. This gives me self-confidence and also the YouTube algorithm. And then I have the possibility to continue my work on this channel. Thanks and bye.